here are 13 super weird Spanish words that you'll be surprised to know exist. Some of this you'll want to share with your friends. Some just might change how you think about Spanish forever. And for you Spanish learners out there, some of them might even be useful. My name is Juliana, born and raised in Colombia, and our team and I put together this list based on some of our favorite Spanish words. Some expressions we've discovered do not translate into other cultures, and some words that simply make us laugh. Stay tuned for number 11, that's my personal favorite. So, let's see if you already know some of them. Dar un toque Le dije a Ricardo que íbamos a recogerlo a las 8. Bueno, me parece que todavía no está listo. Aún no ha salido de su casa. Verdad. Ya le escribí, pero no me contesta. Si no sale en cinco minutos, vamos a llegar tarde. Claro. No te preocupes. Le voy a dar un toque. Now, I could be wrong, but I don't think this even exists in American culture. However, it's extremely common in Spanish-speaking countries. I'll admit, sometimes it can be hard keeping track of all these cultural expressions. That's why I always recommend our free PDF to my students. So, allow me to explain dar un toque. Has someone ever called you, let it ring once, then hung up to let you know that you want to see their message or call them back? That's exactly what dar un toque means. It literally means to give a touch. So, you can think of it as tapping the call button, then immediately hanging up. Mimoso. Oye, amiga, ¿cómo va lo tuyo con Carlos? Ay, pues me gusta, pero creo que ya está demasiado enamorado. Se nota, ayer en la fiesta estaba tan pegado a ti, besándote, abrazándote, mirándote. ¿Verdad? Estaba siendo tan mimoso. You might not have heard the word mimoso before, but I'm willing to bet that you have heard mimosa. A mimosa is equally just as sweet as the meaning we're referring to, but not quite. A single word can have so many meanings. Are you tired of pausing and looking up words? Well, Fluent News Video Player has interactive subtitles that instantly pause the video and show you multiple definitions, including idiomatic expressions that you wouldn't find in a regular dictionary. Go check it out right now. Can you guess what mimoso is? I'm willing to bet you have someone in your life who can't seem to do anything or go anywhere without their significant other. Or maybe you have a pet who is always at your hip, whines when you leave them, or follows you into the toilet and always is sitting on your lap. We call these people or pets mimoso in Spanish. It's like a combination of cuddly, attached, always on your hip, and affectionate. Someone who is mimoso or mimosa enjoys being giving affection or wants to give it through physical contact. So, next time you say you want a mimosa, think about what you're asking for. <laughs> Botellón. I just can't help but laugh every time I remember that this word exists. The fact that this situation has its own word just goes to show how common it is. Important note, botellón is just strictly in Spain, not in Latin America. So, if you mention un botellón there, they'll probably think that you're talking about a very, very big water bottle. Picture this. You're walking through a park in Madrid at 11.30 p.m. and come across a group of young people. They're laughing, playing music, and most importantly, surrounded by alcohol. What you're witnessing is a botellón, a mass outdoor drinking session. Vergüenza ajena. Amiga, tengo que contarte lo que pasó el sábado. Sí, dime. Estaba en la discoteca con María. Estábamos bailando cuando de repente ella tropezó. Derramó su bebida sobre un chico y nos tuvimos que ir. No me digas. Sí, me dio vergüenza ajena. If you've ever felt embarrassed for someone else because of something they did or something that happened to them, but not you, you've experienced vergüenza ajena. Vergüenza means embarrassment or shame. While ajeno is an adjective that means others or not affiliated to me. So, vergüenza ajena literally means shame that is not affiliated to me or others' shame. It's basically what we call secondhand embarrassment in English. Trámite. Visa applications, getting your driver's license, getting a marriage license, getting divorced. What do all of these things have in common besides being headache-inducing? 
steps like paperwork, appointments, phone calls to make, and anything else that leaves you thinking, when will this be over? The closest thing in English is process, but that doesn't fully convey the meaning of trámite. Trámite means annoying bureaucratic stuff. Empalagar. ¡Qué buena pinta! ¿Qué son? Galletas de chocolate con mantequilla de maní. ¿Quieres probar? Sí. Gracias. Mmm, muy buenas. ¡Qué bien! ¿Cómo empalaga? Have you ever eaten something sweet that was just a little too sweet? And you were like, el pastel empalaga. This cake is too sweet. In English, we might say something is too rich to describe a food that makes us feel sick because of how sweet it is. But Spanish has a very straightforward word for this. Empalagar is a verb that means to be too sweet. But it can also be used as an adjective. Empalagoso. It means sickly sweet. The fun part about this word is that it is also commonly used to describe people who are too sweet. We all know someone like this. Someone who's overly saccharine and their excessive sweetness feels insincere and can become irritating. Amigovio. Have you ever been in a relationship that's not actually a relationship? You don't really know what to call it or where you stand with this person. Some call it the talking phase, a situationship, etc. Other times, you know what you have with them. Something casual. More like friends with benefits. Don't deny it. We have all been there too. Amigo means friend. And novio means boyfriend. So you can guess what it means when you put them together. You end up with something in between. Someone more than a friend, but not quite a boyfriend or girlfriend. An amigovio or an amigovia. Picotear. ¿Vamos a comer? No tengo mucha hambre. ¿Vamos a picotear entonces? Perfecto. Vamos por unas tapas. When I made my first Peruvian friend, I started hearing the word piqueos for the first time. In Spain, they say picoteos. But if you've ever been to Latin American country, you've probably heard the word piqueos being used. This is something you typically do while out with friends, at a party, or watching Netflix. And hey, do you know that you can picotear while watching Netflix and learning languages? You can do so now with fluent use Chrome extension for Netflix, which allows you to learn while watching any series or movies with subtitles on Netflix. Check it out in the link in the description below. Whether it's piqueo or picoteo, we're talking about the same thing. Snacks, finger foods, appetizers, anything that you can nibble on. When you snack on these foods, or grace, as we'd say in English, you are picoteando. Picotear literally means to peck, so it makes sense why we'd use it to mean to snack on or nibble on. Dominguero. This word reminds me of those Hallmark movies where the super successful, highly independent daughter escapes from her big city life in New York to her humble hometown for the holidays or weekend. In Spain, they'd call her a dominguera. This is actually an expression that fits perfectly with the characters in Two and a Half Men. Go watch that video to learn even more Spanish. What would Charlie say? Mi plan dominguero es ver el partido y tomar una cerveza. My Sunday plan is to watch the game and drink a couple of beers. Typical Charlie. Is there something that you do every Sunday without fail that has just become your Sunday routine? Or have you ever had someone ask what your Sunday plans are? That's exactly what this is. We can use dominguero to turn the word Sunday into an adjective in these cases. Like in my case, mi plan dominguero is watching romantic comedies and cuddling with my dog. Dominguero is also someone who takes mini vacations or getaways to the countryside over the holidays or weekends, usually to get an escape from the busy city life. Mortable. Do you love Tim Burton or maybe the sight of blood? Maybe you enjoyed reading The Telltale Heart by Edgar Allan Poe. Or better yet, something super popular right now that I bet a lot of people can relate to is being watching true crime. 
but maybe jumping straight into watching true crime in Spanish is a bit much. If that's the case, I have the perfect recommendation for you to help bridge the knowledge gap, fluent you. We have curated a library of authentic videos that are accessible to beginner and intermediate learners, so check it out. Have you come across any of those YouTube channels of people telling real-life stories of murders or kidnappings for 30 and 40 minutes? If they make you want to get cozy in bed and grab a bag of popcorn, true crime might be your immortal. When something is your immortal, it's kind of like your Roman Empire, but only if your Roman Empire is something dark. And you like it, but aren't sure why, because it's creepy or gross. In English, it means something like morbid fascination. Estrena. Picture this. You just got home from the mall with your friend. You bought a new pair of jeans you plan to wear to a concert. You already tried them on at the mall and fell in love with them. So you're counting down the date until you get to wear them for the first time. In Spanish, you'd be estrenándolo. Estrenar means to wear something new for the first time. It represents the excitement when you get to show off your latest fashion purchase that we can't quite capture with one word in English. Costarse. Think of something hard for you to do, emotionally, physically, mentally, whatever it may be. When you think about it in English, you probably only think, this thing is hard to do, it pains me to do this thing, I don't like doing this thing, or even, me cuesta mucho entender a los chilenos. It's hard for me to understand Chilean. Or getting more emotional, me cuesta decir te amo. It's difficult for me to say I love you. As you can see, the Spanish way of looking at difficult things is that it's hard because it costs you something. Energy, time, happiness, anything. That's what the verb costarse means. Without the reflexive pronoun se, costar just means to cost. And it's used to talk about money. But costarse literally means to cost oneself, and it's used to describe things that are hard for you to do. Duende Duende is a very multifaceted word in Spanish. The meaning changes based on the context. Duende can mean elf, goblin, or spirit. But the main meaning, you know that magical feeling you get when you're walking barefoot in the grass, watching the sunset, or you know of nature? That's duende. Monica and Ross decide to expose each other's secrets on Thanksgiving in front of their friends and family. Go enjoy that friends video as you learn even more Spanish essential vocab.